Part 2. James Clavell, The Children's Story. Finishing up. The last page we, we left off on was, Mama said that Dad's gone away forever. Johnny stared at her incredulously. He has a holiday? The new teacher laughed. She was wrong. She's wrong, Johnny. After all, everyone who goes to school has holidays. That's fair, isn't it? The children shifted and rustled and watched. And Johnny said, I can see him? Of course. Your daddy just has to go back to school a little. He had some strange thoughts and he wanted other grown-ups to believe them. It's not right to want others to believe wrong thoughts, is it? Well, no. I suppose not. But my dad never thought nothing bad. Of course, Johnny. I said wrong thoughts, not bad thoughts. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's not right to show grown-ups right thoughts when they're wrong, isn't it? Well, yes, Johnny said, but what wrong thoughts did he have? Just some grown-up thoughts that are old-fashioned. We're going to learn all about them in class. Then we can share knowledge, and I can learn from you as you learn from me. Shall we? All right. Johnny stared at her perplexed. My dad couldn't have wrong thoughts. He just couldn't. Could he? Well, perhaps sometimes when you wanted to, perhaps sometime when you wanted to talk about something very important to your dad, perhaps he said, not now, Johnny, I'm busy. Or, we'll talk about that tomorrow. That's a bad thought. Not to give you time when it's important, isn't it? Sure. But that's what all grown-ups do. My mama says that all the time, Mary said. All the other children nodded and they wondered if their parents should go back to school and unlearn bad thoughts. Sit down, Johnny, and we'll start learning good things and not worry about grown-up bad thoughts. Oh, yes, she said, when we sat down at her seat again, brimming with happiness. I have a lovely surprise for you. You're all going to stay overnight with us. We have a lovely room and beds and lots of food and we'll all tell stories and have such a lovely time. Oh, good, the children said. Can I stay up till eight o'clock? Mary asked breathlessly. Well, as it's our first new day, we'll all stay up till 8.30, but only if you promise to go right to sleep afterward. The children all promised. They were very happy. They were very happy, Jenny said, but first we got to say our prayers. Before we go to sleep, the new teacher smiled at her. Of course, perhaps we should say a prayer now. In some schools, that's a custom too. She thought a moment, and the faces watched her. Then she said, let's pray. But let's pray for something very good. What should we pray for? Bless Mama and Daddy. Dad, Danny said immediately, that's a good idea, Danny. I have one. Let's pray for candy. That's a good idea, isn't it? They all nodded happily. So, following their new teacher, they all closed their eyes and st steepled their hands together. And they prayed with her for candy. The new teacher opened her eyes and looked around disappointedly. But where's our candy? God is 
all seeing and is everywhere. And if we pray, he answers our prayers. Isn't that true? I prayed for a puppy of my own lots, lots of times, but I never got one, Danny said. Maybe we didn't pray hard enough. Perhaps we should kneel down like it's done in church. So the new, te new teacher knelt and all the children knelt and they prayed very, very hard. But there was still no candy. Because the new teacher was disappointed, the children were very disappointed. Then she said, perhaps we're using the wrong name. She thought a moment and said, instead of saying God, let's say our leader. Let's pray to our leader for candy. Let's pray very, let's pray very hard and don't open our eyes till I say. So the children shut their eyes tightly and prayed very hard. And as they prayed, the new teacher took out some candy from her pocket and quietly put a piece on each child's desk. She did not notice Johnny, all alone of all the children, watching her through the, his half-closed eyes. She went softly back to her desk and the prayer ended. And the children opened their eyes and they stared at the candy and they were overjoyed. I'm going to pray to our leader every time, Mary said excitedly. Me too, Hilda said. Could we eat our leader's candy now, teacher? Oh, let's, please, please, please. So our leader answered your prayers, didn't he? I saw you put the candy on our desks, Johnny burst out. I saw you. I didn't close my eyes and I saw you. You had them in your pocket. We didn't get them from, with praying. You put them there. All the children, appalled, stared at him and then at their new teacher. She stood at the front of the class and looked back at Johnny and then at all of them. Yes, Johnny, you're quite right. You're, you, you're a very, very wise boy. Children, I... Put the candy on your desks so you know that it doesn't matter whom you ask whom you shut your eyes and pray to to god or anyone even our leader no one will give you anything only another human being she looked at danny god didn't give you a puppy give you the puppy you wanted but if you work hard i will only i and someone like me can give you things. Praying to God or anything or anyone for something is a waste of time. Then we don't say prayers? We're not supposed to say prayers? The puzzled children watched her. You can if you want to, children. If your daddies and mommies want you to. But we know, you and I, that it means nothing. That's our secret. My dad says it's wrong to have secrets from him. But he has secrets that he shares with your mommy and not with you, doesn't he? All the children nodded. Then that's not wrong for us to have a few secrets for them, is it? I like having secrets, Hilda. Hilda and me have lots of secrets, Mary said. The new teacher said, we're going to have lots of wonderful secrets together. You can eat your candy if you want to. And because Johnny was especially clever, I think we should make him monitor for the whole week, don't you? Then they all nodded happily and popped the candy into their mouths and chewed gloriously. Johnny was very proud as he chewed his candy. He decided that he liked the teacher very much because she told the truth. She was right about fear because she was right about God. He prayed many times for many things and never got them. And even the one time he did get the skates, he knew his dad heard him and he had put him under his bed for his birthday and pretended he hadn't heard him. I always wondered why he didn't listen. And all the time he, he wasn't there, he thought. Johnny sat back contentedly. Resolve to work hard and listen and not have to wrong thoughts and not have wrong thoughts like that.
The teacher waited for them to finish their candy. This was what she had been trained for. She knew that she would teach her children well and that they would grow up to be good citizens. She looked out the window at the sun over the land. It was a good land and vast. A land to breathe in. But she was warmed not by the sun, but by the thought that throughout the school and throughout the land, all children, all men, and all women were being taught with the same faith, with variations of the same procedures, each according to his age group, each according to his need. She glanced at her watch. It was 9.23. The power of persuasion, laws of attraction, optimism, misdirection. When you have a cocktail like that, it doesn't take a lot to, quote-unquote, change a mind. The thing that's hard about kids is that they're young. And I remember being told when I was a kid that kids are impressionable. Well, one of the reasons why, potentially, is because when you're growing up, you are learning how to become the kind of person that is going to be able to take care of yourself. And you do that by mirror, mirroring and learning and adapting qualities of people around you through habits, through forms of expression, even your vocabulary. I was one, I was always the one that was easily persuaded. I never knew how people could sway. Like, I can fall for it, but I'm, I don't know how to make somebody else fall for it. I don't know how to convince you. I can tell you all the reasons. Now, here, here's where it gets interesting. I can tell you all the reasons why you should leave me alone why you should stay away, and why we shouldn't be friends. And I can also tell you all the reasons why I am a reasonable person, healthy option, a good alternative, and a creative solution. The idea in regards to persuasion is weighing heavily more on one side. That's part of the gaslighting is that's controlling the narrative. And the thing is, is that it really doesn't take a lot to convince people if they really don't know. If they're in a, if they're in a state of learning, to a degree you don't know, that's why you're learning. Um, there's a lot of things that I am learning. I am learning when I was younger, I was convinced through whatever form of lie that I decided to get away from and run from that I wasn't going to be good. I'm not good on my own. And for a very long time, that was right. I was very um, emotionally dependent without actually getting too close. Um, one of the things that I'm hoping to be able to do is to break down certain concepts into more palatable, rational ways that 
one can expand. Um, some people, when they travel through life, they're directional. They have, they, they know where they're going. They have a point A and a point B. I was always one to be more expansive. That's why when I was at my worst, when I was younger, um, I was very self-destructive. I'm really glad that was a phase. But there's some phases that people don't let you live down. If being convinced Johnny originally hated the teacher and then he liked the new teacher. Is that wrong to convince somebody? See, I think that's where the overlapping dynamics in regards to certain diagnoses kind of play into contrast because it's binary thinking when it comes to all or nothing, um, kind of black or white thinking. <clears throat> One of the interesting things that's really interesting that, that creates the dichotomy of crazy is the fact that it's usually boiled, it boils down to two options, which is typically on, typically on average why what a lot of people who are like this tend to play in, uh, tend to use ultimatums. It's like, oh, well, if you're not going to be, if you're not going to be with me, then you, I'm not, you know, then it's me or nobody or whatever, on my way, the highway, you know, like, golly, I remember how much energy it took to get to that point, just, no, but where the crazy comes in is the fact, the dichotomy of crazy that plays in is the fact when it comes to black and white is it boils down once again to one of two options. Well, the interesting thing is it's that's, that's typically on average how much a person can handle at one point in time when it comes to processing things is one to two things, three things tops when it comes to focusing. Um, you can only take in so much for a concentration level before your system just kind of starts to malfunction and short out essentially. And so where it's interesting is the two things. It's not just right or wrong. It can be two different variations of right. It can be two different variations of wrong. It doesn't even have to play into right or wrong. And the right and wrong doesn't necessarily even have to play into subjective circumstances, subjectively speaking, situationally even. So there are people that, I, that I've been around that if they're told they're doing something right, they will do that no matter what, to their detriment. And the problem is, is that they have enough sense to know what's good and what's right and what's healthy, but they don't have enough sense to accept it for themselves and to take it in wholeheartedly. So this is where things kind of go into the more covert nature is where people will sit there and say, um, for example, oh, you know, I just want to be friends. I'm not interested, but they'll never actually admit or even, um, respond, have any kind of responses towards, um, like those kind of towards saying those setting up boundaries like that. So that way they can string along people if they know that there's feelings involved more so. Meaning, coverts are really good at mixing up the signals. It's not a matter of mixing signals. It's a matter of playing on emotions. Um, coverts are really good at um, seeing things. They're very observant. Um, that kind of falls into the tactile function of being strategically regulated <laughs> essentially but
the introduction of something new and enticing shouldn't overwhelm the senses and flood to the point of opposition. It should be a good consideration. It should be a viable option. But in the long run, it needs to play out. Whatever it is. I'm not exactly sure. Without specifications, stipulations, limitations, and concise communication, it's exceedingly easy to take advantage of something as simple as different. When the teacher was talking about grown-ups having wrong thoughts, and it's not okay to have wrong thoughts, this is where the dichotomy comes into play that's quite interesting because when it comes to wrong, is there are variations of wrong because there are universal laws, there are government laws, there are there's etiquette, there's manners, there's common regard, there's courtesies, all that can be slighted. So does it then come down to a matter of perspective? And if that's the case, then it would go to say that gaslighting really isn't that hard to fall for. All you have to do is Be gung-ho about your side. The teacher and our leader. If you focus something so great and so grand as to a person's own opinion, mind, and thoughts, and place it externally on something outwardly, you are never going to find satisfaction, plus you are going to fall easily for the for possible lines of control because you don't know, nor did you have a say, because you gave yourself away. I give myself away way too much. I give away way too much. And that's one of the trauma issues that I have, is trying to get better, and then getting better. See, this is the first time in my life I've ever been exploited. Like, even on small levels, macro, it really messes with somebody. When everything stops, it's only quiet for a short period of time, just like it can only be good for a short period of time because the system of function is resting solely on proprietors who are dysregulated, whose malfunction is dysfunction. Intrinsic values seem to play out clearly, yet direction seems foggy. I do believe that haste is in order on my end for me because I need to start earning money so I can get so we I, I miss working hard I miss being, I miss, I miss working hard, so, time to get back at it.
fun.